So when I was uh, 20 years old, I had a crisis. I was living in Boston, and I'm from North Carolina, and it was my first real winter, and I began to think that I might be losing my mind. Um, and I thought back to when I was a kid, and when I would feel sort of pent up or anxious, I would just sort of take stuff and I would just put it together. Uh, I wouldn't really be thinking about uh, what kind of result I was looking for. I would just sort of stick things together and just start making stuff. That sort of seemed to soothe me, and that became my outlet as a kid. So at 20 years old in Boston, I just started doing that. Um, I didn't have access to any tools. I didn't have any money. I didn't have really a space to work out of. Um, so I just started looking around at what I had available to me, and that was a lot of like paper clips uh, and bottle caps and cans and things like that. So I started just sticking that stuff together, and I started getting kind of good at it. Um, that's a little piece that I did. It's a, called it the useless spinning thing. Um, <laughs> and here was a little toy that I made that was like a little, uh, a little uh, car that you could sort of, you know, was powered by the wind. Um, that is, I don't really know what that is. That was just sort of a thing that I just started making, and then it just became that. Um, <laughs> So I had this really perfectly useless skill, uh, but it was a skill that nobody else had. That's how you become an expert. <laughs> you know, people ask me uh, sometimes, they go like, well, how do you design things? And I, I think that's kind of a funny question because it implies that there's sort of a design process involved. Um, <laughs> There kind of isn't. It's sort of, uh, I think of the way my team and I build things as kind of like sketching in 3D. We will start with a very general idea, um, but it's sort of, we'll sort of start fiddling around with things and then, you know, we'll try to get it to do something that works. And if we can get it to work, then we're done. We don't really go through a whole lot of refinement process or anything like that. Um, to the extent that we actually have a master plan, it's usually expressed uh, as kind of a cartoon. Um, I think you might agree with me that master plan is a little grandiose. It's a little bit more like a hunch. Um, and I think my clients really deserve a lot of credit because uh, they give me money based on this. Um, uh, I find that sort of the heavier, the more weighted towards what we're doing as design, like in, in terms of design, I feel like that's actually kind of inhibits the process. Um, I feel like there's really a lot of the spirit to what we do that is about figuring out as we go along. Um, all of the stuff that we're doing is sort of spontaneous decision making as we do it. Um, so. I am not a planner, um, so this should go great. Um, <laughs> I thought this was, uh, I thought that, I always sort of looked at that as being kind of a weakness, um, but I also knew that this was just sort of how I uh, needed to do things. Um, I always felt a lot more excited about things that I was doing if I didn't have a plan. Um, this is one of my favorite quotes. The difference between theory and practice is greater in practice than in theory. <laughs> uh, and that, I think that sort of sums up a lot of how we do things and how I do things, my, my approach to life, generally. Um, because thinking about doing something is not the same as doing it. You know, you can plan things out to within an inch of its life, and you know, you will, some of it will happen, that you anticipated, and a lot of that stuff won't happen. And then there's gonna be a ton of stuff that you never could have predicted that will happen. And so you might as well kind of just dive in and just deal with it all at the same time. Um, I really think that um, doing things is where the risk is. Um, and that's really where I prefer to be. Um, is something that keeps me honest. It's something that I can't really lie to myself while I'm doing it. It doesn't matter 
where my ego is either. Like I can think of myself as a genius or I can think I'm an idiot. And the thing that I'm working on either works or it doesn't work. Uh, and I think it's clean that way. It sort of frees me from any of that sort of self-consciousness. Um, I am not a fundamentalist about the planning things. I want to make that clear. Like there are things that you definitely need to plan about. Like if you're making a space station, you probably want to be, that you probably want to have a plan. But at the same time, <laughs> if something goes wrong on the space station, you probably might want to be a pretty good improviser, right? Um, and I think, you know, when you can improvise something, it actually leaves room for really interesting things to happen. Um, I am not a, like a great craftsman. I'm not a great carpenter. I'm not a great welder. I'm not a, I'm kind of a fair to middling machinist. I mean, I can do a lot of that stuff, but uh, you would never really look at it and say, oh, that's pretty. Um, <laughs> it'll stick together, but it, you know, that's about it. What I can do, though, is I can see connections between things. I can, um, I can see how things can fit together that wouldn't ordinarily fit together, and I can intuit things. And I can make decisions about those things on the fly. And that's really hard to do if you have everything uh, rigidly planned out beforehand. I don't know if that's a talent, but I do think it's a skill that can be developed. Um, the nature of my practice is that we're doing stuff that we have never done before. You know, so if you're going to be bouncing a bowling ball off a couple of trampolines, you will, you know, you can probably take some time and sort of do some math and draw some diagrams out to sort of predict what you're going to get. Um, but you also, you know, you're, you're going to be bouncing bowling balls off trampolines <laughs> at some point, so you might as well just get to it. Nobody's going to die if you fail, probably. <laughs> but you just move things around and you, and you get it, you work it out. <laughs> you know, so much of life is we're told that we're doing it wrong, that... Um, you don't know enough, that you're inadequate, that you should have shot the first video in landscape, <laughs> that you... <laughs> but when I, was, when I was 20 years old, I didn't know anybody who was making stuff out of paper clips, you know? So there wasn't anybody that could tell me that I was doing it wrong, you know? Um, so I had this whole medium that was my own. Um, and I was free to fail, and I was free to make my own mistakes, and, they were, and I was miles ahead of anybody else who would have tried to tell me that I was doing it wrong. Um, and I think for that reason, it stayed interesting. Um, so then I started, uh, you know, things, I kept on building on things. I kept on um, adding movement to my little sculptures. I uh, got more interesting trash like uh, fax machines and copy machines, and I would just tear those apart. And I would add uh, little motors to these little things. And they became machines. They stopped being just static sculptures. Uh, they were also machines that didn't work very well. Um, but they didn't work very well in a really interesting way because I hadn't been designing them in the first place. So a malfunction sort of just sort of looked like behavior. It was like the thing was talking to me. Um, and they became kind of like organisms. Um, I really think that um, making something is about having a conversation with the materials that you're working with. You know, you come in with your ideas. The materials have their own ideas. You come and you sort of meet in the middle somewhere. Um, if you listen to them, they will talk to you. I worked on a project for Red Bull um, a while back, and there was a, this little section that had worked really great in the shop, but once we got it to the site, it was a complete failure. It just had not, it never, never worked. 
Um, and so it was the day before we were shooting, and I had to come up with this solution on the fly. Um, and I looked around, and we had these lighting stands. They're called C-stands. And the way they work is they have this knuckle that you can tighten, and it keeps everything stiff, and everything's really sturdy. That's how they work statically. Dynamically, if you loosen the knuckle, everything collapses. So I decided to use that. Um, and as we were working, we were, uh, this guy comes by, and he goes, no, nah, you're doing it wrong. I'm like, no, I, I think we're OK. And he goes, no, the whole thing's going to collapse on you. And I said, yeah, I know. We're, gonna, we're OK. And he's like, he walks away. He's like, this guy's an idiot. Um, <laughs> but uh, so here's what we ended up doing. Uh, I'll play this little section for you. It goes by really fast. Um, and it's a really small section, but it's something that I'm really proud of. Um, so you'll see this. And you see the little weight rolling down. It's going to trigger a sledgehammer that hits the thing. And this is the little C stand. It happened really fast. So you can see this thing that's held in, in um, like a little V. And that's this thing that's held in tension. And it has this arm that comes along. And it just knocks it, loosens it, lets the other thing collapse, and lets this little knuckle fall off this, off the little uh, arm. I can play for it a little, this is in slow motion. Um, that'll just give you, let you see it a little bit better. And you can see it right there, how it just drops. Now, that's something that you probably wouldn't have noticed as you're just watching this just regularly, but that's something that I'm really proud of because it just sort of, just, it, it, it just sort of captures this sort of ethic. It's, it sort of really is, uh, underlines the idea that, uh, that the proper use of tools is overrated. <laughs> um, that you can, use, you can use what the thing does, and you can use what the thing doesn't do. I really think that making should be an act of discovery. If you... If you know everything about the thing, then there's really kind of no point in making it, you know, because you already know everything about it. Um, I have never understood people that really had to have everything, you know, go exactly as they expected. You know, it's never going to be that way. You're always going to be disappointed. But if you go in the other direction and you can kind of embrace sort of the messiness and the unexpected. There's a lot of richness there. I think that there is a discipline to improvisation, and there's a discipline to naivete. Um, I think that the thing that you're working on, you can make it a collaborator, rather than just something that you can impose your will on. Um, if you ask chaos what it wants to be, Sometimes it'll tell you. You can make a friend of chaos. Thank you.